Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Good, I hope. Okay, so today is the 26th. Uh, any questions before we get to business? Yeah? Um, last night's Wex, the top part about one of them was about parody, and there was a number that I hadn't seen before, like related to parody. I think it was like 6.3 or something. Okay. And I think my fear overall is that at some point, like on an assessment or a test or something like that, we're going to be asked one of those questions that we haven't seen before. Okay. And it don't have like information on it, how to approach it or solve it. Okay. So I guess my question is, is I mean, this is not your first rodeo, but do you expect, like, generally, for the most part, on a test, have we, we're going to have seen everything that that we are asked to do? For sure, yeah. For sure. Other questions? Okay. Uh, so. Uh, the last thing that we did last time was the following. We figured out a formula for a plus b to exponent 3. And it was quite tedious. Right? We did a bunch of distributions. So we did a bunch of distributions and collections and thing like th things like that. It took like half a page. Uh, at any rate, here's the answer uh, that we finally arrived at. a cubed uh, plus 3 multiplied by a squared multiplied by b plus 3 multiplied by a multiplied by b squared plus uh, b cubed. After a lot of sweat, that was the answer. And one of the questions um, corresponding to that to the previous lecture was uh, one of the one of the Wex questions was compute or is I guess compute a plus b to four in the same way as this and then I then I made some comment uh, that's not it may not have been entirely clear to you. Uh, not using Pascal's triangle. <laughs> Pascal's triangle. Okay. So today we're going to talk about Pascal's triangle. And it amounts, it, it's quite useful. It has a, ver a variety of um, applications, but one of the applications is quickly computing something like a plus b to exponent 4 without much work at all. Uh, but on the, ex on the homework exercise, you've got to do this one the long way. Sad. Okay. <clears throat> so specifically, we're going to consider the following. We want to find formulas for a plus b b to exponent n for n in the whole numbers. So what's the smallest whole number? Zero. Zero, Zero is the smallest whole number. So we're going to make a, uh, several rows. So when n is zero, in this case, that means, I mean we're considering uh, the expression a plus b to exponent 0. So what will that give you? a plus b to exponent 0. 1. It'll give you 1. Because anything uh, to exponent 0 is 1. And then there's a little asterisk there, right? A little way that's not quite right. So why is that not quite right? Because 0 to 0 is not defined. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write equal 
Uh, and then I'm going to write the one, and I'm going to write it way out here in the middle of what horizontal space remains. I'm going to write it uh, here. Uh, and, you know, I want you to just, I, I wouldn't be a mathematician if I didn't feel compelled to write uh, something like, you know, beware zero to zero. Right. <clears throat> okay. Fine. <clears throat> n equal to 1. Uh, well, that means that I'm asking you to work hard to figure out what a plus b to exponent 1 is. <laughs> so what's that? a plus b. Okay, well, okay, it wasn't that hard. Uh, a plus b. And I'm going to write it underneath here, so a plus b. <coughs> Okay, and then last time we worked on uh, the n equal 2 case because that's, uh, that's a plus b all squared, like so. And then last time we wrote a page, or at least I wrote a page, it might not have fallen on a page for you, of three formulas. We did a plus b all squared, a minus b all squared, and we also did a plus b multiplied by a minus b. This is, this is the, the first one on that page. So what's the formula? Very good. a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. <coughs> the n equal 3 case That's the last thing that we did last time, and the first thing we just copied down this time. It's right there, so all that we need to do is just copy it. A plus B cubed, uh, and then this is equal to uh, A cubed plus 3 times A squared times B plus 3 times a times b squared uh, plus b cubed. Okay. Now, before this page is over, we're going to write more rows. But for the moment, I'm going to pause because I want to ask some questions. Okay. <clears throat> So I want to look at just that, just that term for a second. Uh, can someone remind us, what, is, what does a squared mean? a times a, right? So another way to read that this thing in between my index fingers is 3aab. You could read it that way, 3aab. Uh, and then you could say the products out loud. You could say 3 times a times a times b. And my, my question is, is how many A's are, are in that expression right there? There's two of them. And how many B's? One. So I'm just going to note that to myself here, that for that one, there's two A's and a single B. How about for the, this expression, how many A's and how many B's? There's one A and there's two B's. Now it gets a little weird until you fully understand the, the pattern. So for this term right here, how many A's and how many B's? There's three A's and zero B's, right? Because if you were to read this one out loud, this one would be sort of like AAA. That's what it would be. And there's no B's in there. So this is a, uh, three A's. and zero b's. Okay, how about this one? Mm -hmm. And zero a's. Okay, interesting. 
Uh, now, going left to right, <clears throat> I'd like for you to observe that the number of A's is counting down, right? There's three, and then two, and then one, and then zero. Similarly, going left to right, what do the B's do? They count up. Zero, one, two, three. But something's the same for all of them, and that is the following. If you add up all the, a the, quantity of, the quantities of all the A's and B's, how many do we have? Three, three right? All together. For that term, we have three. How about the next one? Three again, right? How about the next one? Three again, that's too good to be true. <laughs> and the last one? Three. Ah, interesting. So we have different numbers of A's and B's in each term, but the total quantity is three, right? AAA, AAB, ABB, BBB. And why are we always getting three? Because this, this, this is the n equal 3 case. All right. Let's do it again for the rows above. For this term, how many a's and b's? Two and zero, right? For the one next to it? Very good. And finally, zero A's and two B's. Again, the A's are counting down and the B's are counting up. Uh, the number of A's for this row starts with two. Why? Because we're in row two. <laughs> the number of A's in this row starts with three because we're in row three. And how about if you add up the, a the quantity of A's and B's, do you observe that you get two, two, two at every position in row two? Okay, let's continue. For this term, how many A's and how many B's? One and zero. <clears throat> and the other one is zero and one. <clears throat> and of course, the sum of these is one in both cases. And of course, we are in the case n is 1. <clears throat> OK. Finally, and this one's weird, which is why I started at the bottom and not at the top. For this term, how many a's and how many b's? Zero a's and zero b's. That would have been weird if I had started there. And of course, you add those up and you get zero because we're in the case of n is zero. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now, we're going to do the n is four case. 
And remember that this is this is literally the punchline to the answer to one of your homework questions. The punchline, right? That is to say, the line that comes last on your homework exercise. But on your homework exercise, it's all the intermediate work that's being graded. So if you just copy this down, you're just going to get a zero. Okay, if you don't provide all the intermediate work. Uh, okay, now. I suspect that at this point you could tell me uh, for each term how many A's and B's they're supposed to be. But there's something that's slightly mysterious that I'm going to leave open for the moment. And that is that uh, notice that here there was a 2 and we haven't talked about that at all. Uh, and then there's a 3 here and a 3 here and we haven't talked about that at all. Uh, so uh, for the moment I'm ignoring the 2 and the 3 and the 3. I'm just going to ignore that because we're going to circle back around to that. So for the first term, how many A's and how many B's are, supposed to be, are there supposed to be? Very good. So it should be A to 4, and then I won't write any B's because there's 0 of them. Okay, then plus how much A and B? 3, Three and 1. So A cubed multiply by b. And notice, for those of you who like to take very neat notes, the horizontal space is asymmetric on either side of the plus, because I'm going to write something there in a moment, in about five minutes. Uh, plus, next, right, 2 and 2. So a squared b squared. Next, 1 and 3, very good. And finally, b to 4. <clears throat> Any question about where those came from? Now, what, what's missing? What's missing is there's something missing that goes here, that coefficient, that coefficient, that coefficient. Those are missing. Okay, so we're going to come back to that. And we're going to do the NS5 case. So see if you can do it without me, without my prompting. Okay, so in the interest of time, the first term will be what? A to 5, good. Next term? Very good. A to 4 multiplied by B. Because notice, remember, that A to 4 is just a nice short way to say A, 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 A. So this is A, 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 B. Five items. This one is A, 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 A five items. Next. Very good. A, a cubed B squared. A, 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 B, B. Next. Very good. Next. Very good. And finally, B to 5. Okay, and again, what's missing here is there's a coefficient that goes there, a coefficient that goes there, a 
coefficient that goes there, and a coefficient that goes there. So now my claim, we're going to, I'm going to answer this question and I'm going to leave this one on pause for about five minutes. And my, my claim is that by the end, by the time we're finished with the next page, you'll be able to come back and answer this one in about three seconds. Okay, so the answer to this one is that the coefficients are four, six, and four. And that's not from memory, I did it just then. Okay. <clears throat> it is from memory, actually. <laughs> but, but I could have done it just then, and you wouldn't have known. Uh, fine, so this is on pause for a moment. <clears throat> Uh, and we're going to discuss something that's going to seem like it's uh, out of nowhere uh, called Pascal's Triangle. And what it is, it's a nice uh, little pattern that you can draw on a sheet of paper if you're bored, right? Something that you just doodle. Uh, here's the rule. You start out by writing 0, 1, 0. And I'm going to write it in the top middle of the page. Zero, one, zero. Specifically, I want you to imagine that there were three slots in the top middle of the page. And the way that we decided we were going to fill them was in that way, zero, one, zero. Uh, now, we're going to make a next row. And uh, there's going to be slots. But here there were four slots. Uh, now there's going to be, uh, uh, thank you, three. <laughs> now there's going to be five slots on the next row. Uh, and they're not going to be exactly underneath each other. Rather, uh, for example, there'll be a slot right here that's straddling in between those two. And then one next to it straddling in between those two. And then, oh, I guess there's four. I can't count. So something like this. <clears throat> okay. So now we want to rule the rule to fit to to write in the numbers on those slots. So so there's two aspects. Uh, there's two aspects to uh, two two rules to to this. The outermost slots always get zeros. So, okay. That's easy enough. So the leftmost and rightmost always are going to get a zero. And then the ones that are on the inside, they're going to be the sum of the two that are up left and up right from it. So that is to say, we're going to add these two numbers together to get that one. So what goes right here? One. And the one next to it? One. Okay, uh, another row, and again, the, the offsets will be there, that there'll be a slot that's sort of in between the, the two slots that are above it. So, there, 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 and there, there. <clears throat> okay, so... What are the two rules? Outsides get, zero. Outsides get zero. And the other rule? You add two numbers to the right to get both on side. Very good. So what's, what are these three numbers then? One, two, one. One, two, one. Next. Uh, 
Outsides get zero. And then now we need just a little bit of computation. We have four numbers. Uh, four? Yeah, what are they going to be? One, three, three, one. Any question about that? <clears throat> this is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Next. Outsides get zero. Okay, now I'd like to point out something before I write down the answers. <laughs> Maybe, you, hopefully you haven't already. Uh, <laughs> what were we talking about on the previous page? Yeah, we were talking about computing a plus b to uh, a whole number exponent. That's what we were talking about. That's what we were talking about. And then somehow, in a manner that wasn't entirely clear, uh, to, may, perhaps to you, but it was clear to me, uh, I knew that th this, this needed to be 464. Yeah. OK. So what are the numbers here? <laughs> 1, <laughs> 4, 6, 4, 1. So now, I'm gonna we're gonna write the fifth row in a, mo in, a in a minute, in just a minute. But I, I I think that right now the majority of you could now answer the question of what are these four numbers? What's this one? Five, ten, ten, and five. And where do those come from? <laughs> one and four. Four and six. Six and four. Four and one. So to fill out this, this latest row, the outsides always get zero. You probably noticed another pattern, that the one that next to the zero on the inside is always a one, right? That's always a one. And then there's a little bit of question about what goes in these ones, right? So how about these numbers here? We just set them, right? <laughs> Five, 10, 10 and five. <clears throat> One, five, ten, ten, five. Another nice thing is that they're always uh, Palindrome. Yeah, that, I, was, <laughs> I was I was drawing a blank there. A palindrome. They're read forwards. They're they're read the same way, forwards and backwards. Like dad is a palindrome, right? What's another one? Race car. Also, Taco Cat. 
that's also a palindrome. Uh, these are palindromes. Uh, fine. As a result, <clears throat> well, back up just slightly. Uh, if you go and look up Pascal's triangle on the internet or what have you, uh, most of the time you, you don't write the zeros. I just write the zeros there the first time that I'm doing it so that the rule is a little bit easier to understand. But this shape right here is usually what's referred to as Pascal's triangle. Uh, and the zeros are, are not mentioned, they're just implied. And of course, it goes on infinitely far, it go, as far as you care to take it. OK, so as a result, uh, well, this is, this is rho. Uh, this one corresponds to rho n is 0, then n is 1, then n is 2, then n is 3, then n is Four, then n is five. So that's the n is five row. So I think right now I could ask you uh, to please do how about a plus b to exponent six. Well, there's kind of two phases to answering this question. So the first thing is you've got to write down, at least this is the way I do it. I write down all the terms and I, I, I uh, pause the question of the coefficient on the terms. I just write down the terms and ignore the question about the coefficients, and then I come back in and put the coefficients. So what I mean is that for the first term, how many a's should there be? Six. So a to six. For the next term, how many a's and b's? Five and one. <clears throat> For the next term, how many a's and b's? Four and two. Next term, how many a's and b's? Three and three. <coughs> next, uh, yeah, next. I'm going too fast. OK, I'll take a sip of coffee. So uh, two and four now. Uh, next, one and five. And finally. 0 and 6. So that's phase 1, right? This is not the answer. Why is this not the answer? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't considered the coefficients, right? I haven't considered the coefficients yet. OK. Well, what's this one going to be? 1. How about this one? 6. six. That one? 15. Okay, now let's pause for a second because many of you are doing it just right. But and I I want to uh, consider for a second. For example, where did this 15 come from? Five and ten, right? Because it's that one and that one. <clears throat> and where did the six come from? Five and one. And the one? One and zero. OK. So the one next to that? 20. The one next to it? 15. And then six. And then one. Do you observe that the coefficients are a palindrome? Red, 
the same forwards and backwards. Furthermore, concerning the A's and B's, in this term, remember that A to 6 is just a nice way to write A, 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 A. There's six items. So this one is A, 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 A. This one is A, 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 B. Six items. A, 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 B, B. A, 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 B, 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 etc. Any question about this one? So now, one of your questions, a question corresponding to the previous lecture, you're going to have to do this one the long way. <laughs> With distribute, it's just a mess. Okay, but corresponding to, a question corresponding to today is that you're going to do something like a plus b to exponent 8, but you're going to use Pascal's triangle. And you'll find that uh, doing a plus b to exponent 8 uh, is, with Pascal's triangle <laughs> is far easier than doing a plus b to exponent 4 without it. Uh, my question is, yeah. when we're doing something like a plus b to exponent 8, I mean, I'm not very good at this. Like, I'm thinking I'm going to have to do that entire triangle prior to that, all the way to eight. Oh yes, yeah, that you will. Okay. There's no way around it. No, 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 no. I mean, I suppose if like, you know, you're really super clever, but I'm not. yeah, I'm not either. Uh, I just, I just know the rules, and I just follow them, just blah, 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 and then, yeah. So on that exercise, yeah, I'll expect you to make the triangle down to row eight, and then just write it off. Good. So let's have an example of using this. That's going to take a long time, too. It, it will. But you have effectively infinite amount of time because it's a homework <laughs> exercise. Sure. <clears throat> and then when you get to a quiz exercise and you've only got to do it to like row five, then you're going to be like, oh, this is, this is beautiful. I love it. Okay, so how about uh, uh, five times x plus 3, and we're going to raise this to exponent 4, and we're going to do, do this with Pascal's triangle. Okay, so there's two phases to this exercise. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the triangle. And uh, how many rows? We need to make it to row four, right? There, so, but there's really going to be five rows the, because you start counting at zero. Uh, now, like I said, normally when you're doing Pascal's triangle, uh, you don't write the zeros. You just remember that they're there. So the very top of the triangle is a one. And then what's on either side? One and one. And then one, two, one. And then one, three, three, one. Is there any question how I got to here? And then what's, what's the next row? Right, one, four, six, four, one. And how, so how much further do we need to go? That's it, right? Because that, this one is n is 0, and then the next one is n is 1, then the next one is n is 2, and the next one is n is 3, and this last one that we wrote is n is 4. So we don't, know, we don't need to go any further than that. OK, so now. Uh, I'll figure out the exponents, uh, which is to say, I'll figure out the terms uh, leaving uh, horizontal space for the coefficients. So. 5 times x plus 3 to exponent 4. Well, what's playing the role of a and what's playing the role of b? 
Yeah. So it will look like this. It'll be 5x to what exponent? 4. And then plus what now? What will the exponents be? 3 and? Well, so what I'm asking is, is that here the exponents were 4 and 0. What are the next ones? 3 and 1. And leaving myself some horizontal space. So 5x to exponent 3 multiplied by 3 to exponent three, uh, 1. And then plus 5x. So what will be the exponents now? 2 and 2. What will be the exponents for the next one? 1 and 3. <clears throat> and what will be the exponents for the last one? 0 and 4. OK, now, from, from here, uh, What's missing from what we've written? The coefficients, right? So what's the coefficient for this? A 1. Right? So 1. And then for this one? 4. And the next? 6. And the next? 4. And the next? 1. The red is what I just wrote, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. <clears throat> Any question about getting to this place? I'll give you a second to catch up and to think about whether or not you have a question. <laughs> okay. Finally, now it's time to simplify this. So now we'll simplify. Uh, OK. So this is, remember, exponentiation, the punctuation is caret. So we can distribute caret over dot, exponent over product, so that you could write this as, this first term as 1 multiplied by 5 to 4 multiplied by x to 4. That first term could be written that way. <coughs> And then plus 4 multiplied by, OK, how many 5's come up? So that is that. Is this much is OK? OK, now I'm looking at the next term. That red 4 is that red 4. And then now I'm distributing the, th the 3 exponent. Very good. 5 cubed. Uh, but I'm going to commute all of the exponents to the front, uh, all of the coefficients to the front. So I have a 4, 5, 5, 5. And what, uh, what other coefficient? That 3, right? So I'm going to move that 3 to the front. And then multiplied by x cubed. Plus, that red 6 is still there. Times how many 5s? Two of them, right? So 5 squared. And then how much 3? Two. Two of them. So that comes to the front. And then how much x? 2. Plus. There's that red 4. <clears throat> what other coefficients move to the front? 5 and 
three cubed. And then how much X is here? Just one. And then finally, this is just the last thing is one multiplied by three to exponent four. Any question about that? So finally, the only thing left is some calculator work. Okay, which is to figure out the coefficient on each one. Okay, so then 1 multiplied by 5 to exponent 4. 1 multiplied by 5 exponent 4. Yes, yeah, 6, 2, 5. So 6, 2, 5, x to 4. Plus, what's the next coefficient we need to multiply? Okay, 4 times 5 cubed times 3. Okay, 4 times 5 cubed times 3. 1,500 x cubed. Uh, next, 6 times 5 squared times 3 squared. 1, 3, 5, 0 uh, x squared. Next, 4 times 5 times 3 cubed, 540 x. And then finally, one I can do in my head, 81. Now, that's a lot of bookkeeping, oh, you might think. Uh, but I promise you it's not nearly as bad as doing it without Pascal's triangle, which would be far worse. Yeah, it would be terrible. Any question about this one? Okay, so please put away your things. It's time for a quiz.